Sometimes I feel underappreciated. Not today. Not today. <laughs> I have theme music today. <laughs> I, I've been walking around with theme music. And it's my thing I fight against is I don't want to be forgotten. Yeah. I want to be, I want to be, uh, <laughs> He's crying I, I just want people to go like, man, how cool would Burt be right now? Like, that's yeah. the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the fucking thing. Some guy <laughs> let a, left a shitty comment on uh, <laughs> one of our Two Bears posts. I, I never read comments, but it was like the first. How, how does you, you never read comments, but you always seem to see the comments. Now I'm starting to believe what thing you're Who said it in the stream chat that Bert does read comments? I think I believe you now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being naive. I'm sorry for being gullible like fucking Super Jello said. I'm sorry for believing fucking comics. How does he never read comics but he sees every fucking comment? And I love that how they try to act like reading comments is like a bad thing or it makes you look like a loser or you look pathetic. It's like, bro, like you put out, con like I, never, I don't get people who put out content and then try to act like they're better than the comments. Don't you put out content so people can watch it. So if people leave you comment, like your feedback or just letting you know what they think of it, why wouldn't you want to check it out? Sometimes it could be hurtful, cool, but not everybody's going to be super nice to you. Like, just relax, bro. God damn it. It was a good post. I liked the post. And it was like, uh, do not do you remember when Tom and Bert used to be funny? Oh! <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> All right, so I floated this theory in my last video on Tom and Bert. Basically, at this point, I think they're strategically leaning into the cringe to stay relevant. It seems to be a case of any publicity is good publicity. And it reminded me of a comment that I saw on one of my videos a while ago, where someone said that they got an ad for Two Bears One Cave on my video. Now, I don't know if that's 100% true or not, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's their strategy. For those of you who don't know how Google Ads works... Yeah, that's true. I would agree with that. I think that makes sense. I think they are quite sensitive and thin-skinned like most comedians clearly right Bert and fucking tom segura but i also don't think they're as dumb as brendan and co are i don't think they'd shut off with a negative like they see the negative shit and i think they'd be smart enough to lean into it because i think at their core they still don't believe they're doing anything wrong they don't believe that they're not as funny they don't believe that they're not as great they don't believe that they're fucking god's gift to fucking comedy they don't believe all these things they think they're fucking amazing anyway they think those shit don't stink so if people are talking about them negatively, it's still attention. They're still talking about them. So I could see a scenario where somebody sat down with them, their social media manager, their marketing team, or just them themselves notice, you know what? We're not getting the greatest comments about the show, people loving it, but at least they're talking about how much we've changed, how much they hate who we've become, but they're discussing it because it's something that people don't shove about. Even the Your Mom's House subreddit. Go on Your Mom's House subreddit. Every time a new episode drops, there's always a thread that pops up saying, oh my God, how much, Google, or, you know, it's a, it's a shame this show's gone to shit. Or somebody will post like an old clip back in the day where, you know, Tom and fucking Christina used to do the show in one of their bedrooms. And they'd be like, oh my God, remember when the show was fucking amazing. So people are constantly talking about it. So you're better off to lean into it because it's the only attention you're getting anyway. People are not telling you your show's amazing and they love the certain interview you did. So you're better off just like, you know, leaning into that stuff so i could i could see that that makes a lot of sense i'm not gonna lie plus to be objectively you know just in terms of numbers some of these channels podcast cringing included too lazy to try um they're getting way more numbers than some of these podcasts themselves so it'd be smart to kind of jump onto the back of that traffic because these guys these commentary channels uh, are absolutely destroying the actual podcast themselves in terms of views and stuff so these guys care about money anyway they care about virality that helps them to get better deals so i could see a scenario where they are going to be you know using ads or kind of you know jumping on the back of these fucking shows um or jumping on the back of these channels to kind of promote their stuff i could definitely see that for sure if you're an advertiser you can actually target your ads onto a particular hey dexter is that true dexter said yep i made that comment i love it that's true if that was true that's fucking incredible big up big up man the best random show got the best community that's fucking cool i would love it channel or even a specific video so it's possible that ymh is putting ads on my videos which is actually kind of funny mm. because they would be indirectly paying me to trash them <laughs> that's definitely some burt logic right there i can just imagine him sitting in a meeting about all the downfall videos he's been getting he's all excited at the attention and then he blurts out hey why don't we just put ads on those videos I also mentioned this in my last Schultz video how he's obviously leaning into the cringe with his stupid haircut and yeah. Schultz epiphanies I was about to say, this should have been obvious. Anyone that hasn't realized this is dumb. He's definitely leaned into this. Like, he, he saw the reaction he got from the haircut. 
it's a constant comment and every video they upload every episode of fucking flagrant every fucking episode every clip somebody makes a comment about his haircut so clearly he's leaning into it because everybody hates it he's gonna keep rocking it because it keeps the eyes on him it puts food on the table now he's got a kid his brain is super laser focused in to provide it for his kids in that kind of kid mode thing so he's gonna do whatever needs to be done to pay the bill so this is definitely a look that was first done maybe to be funny and then because everybody has such a negative reaction to it, such a strong reaction to it, he's definitely leading into it more. So I can definitely see that. But as for Bert, at this point, he's become a parody of himself and he knows it as well. In the latest episode of Two Bears, One Cave, he literally mentioned the three things that he's known for as if they were his life goals or something. <laughs> number one is taking his shirt off. Number two is telling the machine story. And number three is drinking a gallon of Kool-Aid every day. So Bert's definitely aware of the fact that his career has survived off of those three things and we also can't forget his mating call <laughs> oh man that's brutal but there was also something else that caught my attention in this episode that makes me think they actually have production meetings and plan all of this out i noticed that he said the word energy over 20 times and it was almost like it was planned out in advance kind of like his word of the week you have you have i i his energy is infectious because he's, he's a big he's, energy. And he's I, and got I your energy. He's got my energy. Yeah, yeah. I love oh, that. I love podcast cringe, man. Podcast cringe is now upping the fucking tism. He's upping the tism and he's analyzing these guys with a fucking microscope. The same way I'm analyzing Brendan and overly reading into fucking nonsense things and bringing up law from years ago. Podcast cringe is really up in the levels with Tom and Bert because he fucking despises them. He absolutely despises them. You can tell underneath that he's like, the contempt he has for Bert is fucking palpable. And he's really starting to fine tune, you know, really starting to fine tune the analysis. Like, it's, it's, it's fucking brilliant. I love it. We got podcast cringe. Absolutely legend. That energy. I yeah. love yeah. that energy. Yeah. I love when someone's like, one more. My favorite thing in the world is hungover. Sunday morning in the living room energy. And then like Fuck, five what? Who enjoys being hung over? What? Like that's how you that's how you can tell this guy's lived a life of like quiet luxury. Where he's hadn't really had to have a real job, hasn't really had to worry about how he's gonna pay his rent, hasn't worried how he's going to feed himself. He's always had someone look after him because who the fuck is enjoying a hangover? The hang a hangover is a worst part of partying. It's a worst part of getting on it. It's the worst part of a night out. Like, the, like, sometimes at, towards the end of the night, you're fucking dreading the fucking, you know, pending hangover. You're dreading how bad you're going to feel on the way back home. You're dreading how bad you're going to feel when you wake up. And here he is enjoying it. Yeah, because you've got nothing to do the next day. You know what I mean? And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's why you fucking enjoy it. Flipping hell, man. What a weirdo. Yo, big up 40 FPS. What's good, my guy? Hope you're well, my friend. Big up 40 FPS. Five people came off the plane and were like... uh, Hey man, I love what you do. I love it. And then I was like, oh, I, that energy. I love, I love it's like, I do. really understand people that don't like being famous. I, 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 <laughs> I don't understand people who don't like being famous. Fucking hell, Bert, man. If Bert never made it, if Bert never met Rogan, if Bert never actually became successful, what would happen to him? Like, would he have been happy just being the, the college frat guy in his, you know, in his home state and shit? Would he have been the guy that legitimately blew his brains out because he didn't achieve the level of fame that he wanted? He's so fucking attached to fame. He loves it. He abs That's one thing. That's part of the reason why, in an odd way, I also kind of like him in that he's unapologetically a fame whore. He doesn't try and hide his intent. Like the other guys, you know, try and hide it by being fake humble. Bert isn't. Bert loves the attention. He wants to be the biggest comedian in the world, fame-wise. He doesn't really care about being funny. He just wants everyone to kind of know him. He wants the whole world to mourn when he passes and shit, you know? Like, he's that kind of fucking psycho. So I kind of respect that kind of side of him. I kind of like the fact that he's an unapologetic fame whore. But Jesus Christ, Bert, like, relax with this, man. Just chill out, please, sir. I love, uh, I love energy. I want, that's why I'm terrified of death. You guys are real inspirations to me because <laughs> you live life untethered. You are real genuine bros and I love that energy. Jesus, that is, but that, shipping. that is the energy I strive for in life. No, Rogan's energy is really infectious. Energy, energy. Yeah, I'm onto these guys. I know Bert says the word energy a lot, but that was way exaggerated and I left a few of them out because it became so repetitive and this was only an hour long episode too. 
but they started off the podcast by discussing how their guests, Kevin and John from KFC Radio and Barstool Sports, met Joe Rogan the night before, and I think this episode was recorded around the time they released their vodka in Vegas, so it's been sitting in the vault for a while, and eventually the Jesus, dis- honestly, like, I can't, God bless people, God bless YMH fans, God bless um, Two Bears 1K fans. I don't get how you guys can put up with this. Like people banking episodes and then releasing them later, like months later, weeks later. I don't know how you guys deal with it. I don't know how you guys deal with episodes that have been recorded weeks, 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 weeks prior. That must be infuriating to listen to. Like listen to old stuff that happened before. Like what? God almighty. What? I don't know why they bother. Just miss an episode. Record it later, man. Like, why Why are you banking stuff? Is it really that difficult? Discussion centered around how Bert is good at introducing people. Apparently, it's one of Bert's favorite things to do. And he even plays his own soundtrack in his head when he's being introduced to people for the first time. What? I, love, I, love, I love the Chicago Bulls intro music as I meet someone. Because they go, hey, can I introduce your friend? And then I hear, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome Bert Kreischer! <laughs> He's literally a child, isn't it? He's literally a child. Being 50 and being like this is so embarrassing. He's literally a fucking manjoy. <laughs> and I'm like, very good to meet you. Have I shown you my stomach? <laughs> I don't know if you just caught that at the end there where he said, very good to meet you. Have I shown you my stomach? Yeah, like I said, it's so obvious that he's aware he's a parody of himself. And it got so bad at one point that Kevin and John couldn't help but laugh at how cringy he is. Even Tom had that look on his face where he's just trying to get through another episode, get his money and get out. Bert was telling the story of how he flew out Kevin and John to Amsterdam for 24 hours to party with him and how he feels like he didn't get enough attention or credit for it at the time. But now he finally got to tell Joe Rogan about it at dinner last night and Rogan thought it was a pretty wild thing to do. You know, I want to. Sometimes I feel underappreciated. Not today. Not today. <laughs> I have theme music today. <laughs> I, I've been walking around with theme music. The, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so amazing, you know? <laughs> that's, that's the thing. I think he enjoys all this, though. He enjoys this. It's almost like a. It's, it's like akin to like a humiliation ritual. He enjoys the fact that he's this person to his friends. That's what I think is going on here. I think he enjoys this part of it. Like his friends think of it, oh my god, but he's so fucking this guy's wild, man. This guy's wild. Look at him. You know, he loves that kind of attention. He fucking thrives on it. It's bizarre, it's odd, but he loves this. Negative for better or worse, he loves all this shit. I did one of the coolest things in the world that any dude's gonna do for their friends. I did. When I surprised you guys and flew you to ah, Amsterdam. Yes. And you know oh, that yes. story, right, Tommy? Yes, I do. And, so, I, and I feel like you should be appreciated for it. <laughs> oh, no, no. I got my appreciation last night. I, and, and I say this and like, it never went viral the way I thought it should. And that never... It was- Jesus Christ, bro. Imagine saying that. Even I feel cringe saying that. I think even a 20-year-old will feel cringe saying, man, I wish that fucking thing went viral as much as I thought it would. I thought it would have went more viral. You should feel cringe. A fifty year a fifty one year old man with two teenage daughters and a wife saying, I wish this thing that I did that was meant to be like a you know, a good thing, which has now turned into like, oh, it was all a marketing thing. He flew them to Amsterdam, not because he went to hang out with them, because he actually likes them, because he actually wanted to use them as a marketing prop, which is sad. Because it means that he really doesn't have many real friends. That he has to fly these two guys out who we just met, what, in the last two years or something. Fucking hell, bro. Was repaid with other people the way I thought it should. Like, I thought it should be a thing dudes do. And you know, I did it because you do it to your friends. Not at the last minute, but Tom flies out friends he grew up with. He's like, yo, I'm at the United Center for two shows. And and, And then you fly out two guys who you just met through podcasting. See the difference? How different is that? Tom flies out his actual friends he went to actual college with, right? Friends he actually grew up with in some way. Maybe people would say, hey, I can't afford to come to your show. He said, don't worry, I got you. Cool, nice gesture. And you get to hang out with your old friends in the fucking green room. Whereas Tom, whereas Bert, sorry, flies out podcast friends. Yikes.
big. Why don't you come out? We'll have dinner. We'll spend some time together. It's, That's it's awesome. A, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Tom's brain. Of course, I go. How do I monetize that? <laughs> and so I go apply to Amsterdam. How, how do I get worldwide appreciation? For the- <laughs> It's, it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> the internet did not worship me properly. <laughs> when, when they did not wear, worship me properly. <laughs> when we did Habitat for Humanity, he's like, I want my <laughs> name on a building. <laughs> I think it's crazy how everything Bert does is for attention. He definitely overshares and posts way too much on social media. He reminds me of a friend I used to have in high school who would tell the most outlandish stories and always try to one up everybody. Mm-hmm. The difference is that Bert's carried that energy into his 50s and he has the money now to pay people to hang out with him that's the thing that's the thing they made a great point on we all have friends like Bert we've all had friends like Bert we've all known people like Bert but usually there are people that you meet early on in your life when you're in school high school college whatever but they're usually people that you meet quite early on they're not usually people that you meet you know, while you're working your nine to five, some 50 year old dude who's got this kind of main character energy, it doesn't really work that way. So the fact that or it's not really common, sorry, but the fact that this guy does it is like so bizarre, such a bizarre way to live your life. And he's actually been enabled by the money. The money and fame has actually enabled him to be the worst version of himself because now he can indulge himself in all of the things that he actually dreams about doing or thinks of doing, he can do it because he has a means to do it. He can fly over two guys last minute dot com to meet him in Amsterdam. Those those tickets must have been like that's like an eleven hour flight, maybe twelve. Those tickets must have been, you know, and he probably put them in fucking first class or something. Those are easily like what five grand, ten grand tickets flights, so they can just party with him for twenty four hours in Amsterdam. And again, Amsterdam's a great city, but you know, really, come on, man, fucking insane. If, and if if the money ever does run out, which it probably won't, because you know, uh, burst as loaded, he's obviously loaded and probably made a lot of, a lot of money, and he can it's probably got a lot of coming in residuals. But if the money does ever run out, he's gonna look back at these sort of times and really shake his head in it that he wasted that kind of money doing this type of shit. We all know how he's piggybacked off the success of guys like Shane Gillis, Mark Normand, and Ari Shafir by paying them to do his shows so he can sell more tickets. And so then Bert couldn't help himself and started. Hold on, 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 hold on. I just realized there's a top soft section of the show, Burke's show, where the camera will randomly pan to somebody, I guess, and then they'll be there to take the top off. Can you imagine anything worse? You already have to watch Bert with his top off on stage. Now you have to watch some random guy in a crowd who's like, because that's the thing I think about. Every comedian, for the most part, seems to have male fans that kind of want to be like the comedian. <laughs> You know, so I'd imagine if you go to a Rogan show, there'll be a lot of like middle-aged white guys with tattoos who also do jujitsu, who also are into archery, who also hunt, who also are pro-gun, who also, I don't know, like the UFC, who also believe they're alpha males, who also do cold plunges, right? There's probably a certain type of person that goes to each of these shows. So most likely... There is a Bert of some, there is a, there's other versions of Bert out there. Guys who like, you know, have this kind of adult frat boy mentality. So you're getting all of these energies, like all of these main character energies, as Bert would say, in one spot. You've got the guy, the guy in the crowd who thinks he's God's gift to comedy and the most famous person in the world. And then you've got the guys in the crowd, the guys in the, sorry, you've got the guys on the stage who's the most, who thinks the most famous guy in the world. And then you've got the guys in the crowd who all think they're special too. And they're waiting for their moment to prove it. Oof, that energy must be wild to be around. But I'm curious to go to a Burt show. So when he does actually come to London next, let's actually see. Does he actually perform in London anytime soon? Burt Kreischer. Let's see if he actually performs in London. Because I actually will go. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually curious to see if he actually has any shows happening in London anytime soon. I haven't seen a world tour being announced, but maybe there is one. No, okay, no dates. Sorry, there are no up and coming dates at the moment but if he does announce a show i'd love to go and see it because it'll be interesting just to see the audience to see how many wannabe burts i'll see in a crowd you know i think that'd be wild to see i would love that i'm not gonna lie i'd love to see all the fucking wannabe burts all in one fucking room trying to get his attention trying to be the center of attention that will be fucking wild i'm not gonna lie that'll be the best thing to see in the nth degree the nth fucking degree i'd fucking love that i'm not gonna lie i'd fucking fucking love that okay let's continue 
Let's fucking continue. Where are you with podcast cringe? There you go. Do his shows so he can sell more tickets. And so then Bert couldn't help himself and started explaining yet again just how good his life is and how lucky he is to be a podcaster, even though he has no talent. And I say this, and I hope you guys hear this the right way. This is better than anyone can ever do. This is the funnest thing in the world yeah. <laughs> is to have really funny friends mm -hmm. and see them and then fly in to for your vodka launch and then go hey do you guys want a podcast tomorrow and you guys go we'll change our flight bro and then go let's fucking hang tomorrow because it's the, it's also <laughs> the ease of it you know what i mean like there's you can be a movie star and always like you can tour bloody hell man i hope when i hope when this when this show when this channel becomes successful and I, you know, and I'm making hundreds of thousands per month for whatever these guys are making. I really don't hope I don't turn into this. I really don't hope I get on stream and just start talking about, oh my God, how amazing is it? We are the modern philosophers. People like, I hope I don't turn into this type of people because I have a feeling this happens to everybody. I don't think this is like unique. I think there is something about making a ton of money, talking into a microphone like this that anybody can do that turns that that alters your brain it fucks around with your cerebral cortex i think so it's so, it does something to you i don't know what it, i think maybe it kind of emboldens you maybe it gets gives you a false sense of superiority and competence i don't know it does something because they all sound like fucking cocks they all sound like insufferable obnoxious lacking in self-awareness cocks whenever they make money doing this shit and it's unavoidable they all do it unbearable about the crowd about how amazing they are about how much they work it's like bruh i've seen you run kfc i've seen you run i've seen you try and do a fucking vertical jump like let's be real let's be real if you didn't have this you'd be fucking fucked you're probably you know selling cars somewhere an estate agent somewhere like come on let's relax you're not that amazing like you know what I mean? The guy to kind of lord and celebrate is Dave Portnoy. He's the one that fucking created the platform. Let's chill out. You got in there early. You made your money. Cool. But let's relax with this kind of like grandiose. I'm this. I'm that. We're the best job. Oh, this is better than being an actor. It's like, what? Wouldn't you like to have a fucking talent? Would you, wouldn't you like to have an expertise or an area that you're an expert in, a niche that you can kind of, you know, that people can look at you and say that you're the industry standard? Wouldn't that be something to kind of aim for? Fucking hell, bro. I don't know. There's something about it that just turns people into fucking dickheads. I hope I don't turn into a dickhead. I swear to God. Yeah, exactly. Cloud, Cloud, Cloud K20. AZ gonna tell us we don't matter by 2020, by 2030. Oh. Yeah, NJ Ranger. NJ Ranger, I, I believe you partly. I think you're right, partly. Nice. Mostly just a magnifying glass, B. Partly. I think the fact that it happens to so many people, I think we have to start to look at it as like, it's a thing because I don't think everybody that gets into doing this type of content, myself included, is a dickhead. I don't think so. I don't think I don't think I'm a dickhead personally. I don't think I've got, you know, this obnoxious self-importance main character syndrome thing in me. There is maybe a, a, a hint of it because I'm getting on camera in the first place and talking to you guys. Cool. But I'm not fucking self-absorbed like some of these guys are. So I don't think everybody is like that. I think there's something about making it something about getting into this industry getting into that world and then maybe having people you know validate you by giving you lots of praise that does something to change the, your brain makeup or something i think so again i could be wrong but i think that's the case i don't think everybody is a dickhead that gets into it i think something about the quote-unquote job changes you but oh these guys sound so insufferable or taylor swift but that's that's hard that's a lot to do and i mean i guess you guys go on tour a lot so like the comic lifestyle is not easy but doing this is like for for exactly the hectic channel we over here hate watching exactly the hate channel that's it it's just about pointing and laughing it really isn't that deep and honestly this is probably a good thing it's happened because if these guys didn't turn into obnoxious you know self-absorbed dickheads i probably wouldn't have a channel that people would care about right like no one gives a shit about my fucking um, cultural commentary show ties people mostly want to check out the random show stuff fair enough but i probably wouldn't have a quote-unquote voice that anyone would care about because these guys you know would be okay but when when they were concentrated on just being funny that was when it was the best when these guys were concentrated on turning on their cameras putting on the show every week 
where they try to make each other laugh. They try to make each other cry. They try to make each other get stitches. They try to make each other fall off, the, fall off their chairs laughing. That was when we got the best content. That was when we had the best shows. We had the best version of Barstool back in the day when they were also doing that, creating fun shows. We had the best version of Your Mum's House. We had the best version of Burt Cast, the best version of Defying the Kid, when they just focused on being funny. Do you remember they started to make money and started to think they were entrepreneurs and businessmen and producers, directors, media moguls? It's like, that's when it fucked up for us because now you can't tell them that shit don't stink. The opportunities they can afford and the money you can potentially make and kind of how easy it is <laughs> to just kick it with your friends. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> I feel like it's like some, some secret we unlocked. I'm like, why don't, why don't all you guys try to do this? And we're not that, and we're not that talented. <laughs> no, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, Obviously, that's the thing. I'm definitely thing. not talented. I will say I this. I am for sure not talented. <laughs> to all you guys out there starting podcast. Look at Tom. Tom doesn't believe that though. I think Tom thinks he's talented, you know? Tom didn't agree. To be fair, big up KFC. Some self-awareness there. KFC kind of agreed, but Tom didn't. Tom, Tom's face kind of winced. He's like, speak for yourself, motherfucker. Listen, look at Tom. Look at Tom. Why don't, why don't all you guys try to do this? And we're not that, and we're not that talented. <laughs> no, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, Obviously, that's the, the I'm thing. I'm definitely thing. not talented. I will. Look at, look at Tom. Tom's like, speak for yourself. Say I this. am for sure. See? Yeah, that little, that little thing, that little, that little lip quiver. Tom, the, Tom is not convinced. He's like, no, I think I'm talented. I fucking sold a show to Netflix that I produced, directed, and wrote myself. You know, like, I'm talented. Like, shut up. I've got five specials with Netflix. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't agree he's he's like nah 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 you speak for yourself fat boy i fucking am talented tom does not agree with that in the slightest they're not talented to all you guys out there starting podcasts you're better than us this job i do this forever and Bert seems to be making the most of his fame and success. He's got this idea for a show called Stranded and Branded, which is clearly a ripoff Mr. Beast. So take a look at his soft pitch and I'll pick it up straight after. You can I count can the I, number of grains of rice? Can, like, can I soft pitch my idea? That yeah. I, this is my baby. I've wanted to do this forever. It's called Stranded and Branded. And Stranded I, and Branded? I want to move to a desert island and only sustain my life off of uh, corporate integrations. So people will send me, uh, Porosos would be one, great integration. Uh, I would love uh, Lucy's, kettle and, fire. Lucy's mm -hmm. kettle and Fire, but they send them in crates to my island and I only can live off of branded integrations. And I live there for 30 days. I, and the first one I'd love- Bert, you're 50 years old. Didn't Bert cry and have a nervous breakdown about the Travel Channel shit? That's part of his origin story, right? I was doing the travel channel, doing all these pranks, jumping off of things, falling off of things, getting shot out of things. Then Rogan and Bill Burr sat me down and told me I'm better than this and I should do more with my life and I'm wasting away and I'm going to get really fucked up. And mm, mm. that's part of his origin story, right? He's kind of comedy villain origin story. Now he's creating a show where he puts himself through that voluntarily. It's almost as if that origin story was full of shit then. And come to think of it, that origin story... I think it's Rogan that tells him to stop doing travel channel stuff, but he didn't want to stop. He was enjoying it. He loved the check. He loved getting flown around the place. He loved how important it made him feel. But obviously, you know, it kind of didn't work. I, probably, I think it kind of got cancelled. I'm too sure. But either way, it shows that that story probably wasn't real, that he actually did want to continue being that sort of travel channel host guy that does those, you know, weird, wacky holiday destination type videos because this sounds lame. It also sounds very, you know, unnecessary for a 50 year old to do. Like, why? Of a car sponsorship, nice Subaru, dropped off on the island, and then I get to tear it apart and use it as a castaway in every way possible. <laughs> what? And, and I don't know if I want to spend three months doing that. I could definitely spend a month on an island. I already have the island picked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it. Yeah, in, right outside the Bahamas. I, 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 the, I, beautiful family owns it i've reached out to them a beautiful family owns it. Yeah, <laughs> so you by the way at the time at the time they were, they were trying to sell the island oh epstein <laughs> <laughs> little saint what is it <laughs> buddy if we did stranded and brandon on epstein's epstein. island <laughs> yes i'll tell you this the views will be through the roof, through the roof. <laughs> i don't know how many brands are going to be down but the ones that are, are going to get their money's worth that's for certain dude make stranded and brandon happen yeah, no, I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Really? I will join then, you and, if I can. Well, no, you, you know what it is? Solo, is, is, is you bring out you a brand come? sponsorship. You come out and you go, Bert, it's day four, and I'm bringing out f***ing Pirate's Booty. Pirate, Pirate, 
Pyro water. Pyro yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, pyro yeah, yeah. water. <laughs> pyro water. And I'm like, fucking thank God. I've been but you need snack. What the fuck is pirate water? What are all these brands? These nonsense brands that only exist on podcasts. What the fuck is pirate water? Viva la stool. Is that like a barstool sports thing? What the fuck is pirate water? Imagine drinking something called pirate water. Fucking losers, bro. Everyone else oh, so it's a, a Barcelona sports brand. What is it? Like a like a seltzer basically, I'm assuming, right? Fine pirate where why be yourself when you could be a pirate introducing a new treasure? Pirate water is ten percent alcohol, I guess, sixteen percent malt beverage with four distinctive flavours. Tropical flavours, get ready to party, pirates. My, my, look at the names of these cans. You have to be a fucking G-A-Y lord to drink any of this shit. Miami Vice, Sex on a Beach, Margarita, Bahama, Bahama Mama, Wicked Tea. Now, this is some white boy humor, man. I don't get this. Even, I don't know if some white boys even drink. This is fucking bizarre. And it's got all the pictures of all the, I think it's Barstool people where it, like, because they drink it, I'm going to drink it too. Like, what? It's not available in the UK, is it? I don't think so. Let's see if it's available. Is it available in the UK? Let's see if it's available here. It's probably just a US thing, I'm assuming. A lot of the stuff they don't do international, do they? Um, zip code, store list, no store found. No store in your area. So you can't get pirate water in the UK, no? Pirate water, UK. Negative, not available. Okay, that's a good thing. At least we don't have that fucking muck. You know, clogging up our fucking sewage systems. Max, so Pirate's Booty's here. Too. Yeah, Pirate's yeah. Booty's yeah. here, too. And then we just drink by a fire, and I just catch you up, and you know I would not let you talk. Yeah. I'd be like, I haven't talked to anybody in fucking five days. You I have no idea. Have I ever told you about the time I got involved with the Russian Mafia? So if Bert was stranded on a deserted island and someone came to visit him, the first thing he'd say to them is, have you heard about the time I got involved with the Russian Mafia? I mean, he's basically a walking parody at this point. And like I said, this was only a one hour episode and it felt like Bert was the guest and he was the one being interviewed. He kept interrupting everyone to tell his own stories and pitch his island show. But my favorite part by far was when Bert admitted yet again that he reads the comment section. We've heard him say this so many times and then try and deny it. And he always seems so surprised at all the hate that him and Tom have been getting. He tried to spin it off into a feel good story, but he clearly just embellished the last part to make it sound good yeah. that actually reminds me i was gonna ask you when you were like earlier you're like i don't know what i'm chasing do you think you're chasing more money or oh come on that's an easy answer i'm just, what do you think it is the applause, applause. and the praise and yeah. the love and the yeah. you love. have enough money you just love it's love you start off the podcast i don't think so i think he gave him an out there bert's reaction where he went Phew. that was his real reaction these guys love money. I don't understand why this idea these guys don't... Like, these guys make a lot of money doing very little. That's why a lot of these guys have million podcasts because we, we found out through fucking Brendan that, you know, if you have a podcast deal, which is odd, isn't it, how this works out, but these guys, are man these guys figured it out the right way. They have a great deal on podcasts now with ads where if you have a podcast deal with an ad company, according to Brendan and what Brendan's done, you can effectively have different deals for each podcast. I didn't know that was a thing. I just assumed if you got a podcast deal under your network, you could basically have the same deal on all the shows. You just spread them across. That's I, I thought that was the main point of having a network. That's why you sign shows because the shows would come on board and have already a built-in ad system already working. I think Boss will do the same thing. And then obviously you get a guaranteed salary and they get guaranteed money from the ads. But actually what they do is that they have different shows and then they have different ads on those different shows. Some ads pay more, some ads pay less. But overall, if you have five podcasts, you're going to be clearing quite a lot of money per month, especially if you're doing those shows bi-weekly or weekly. So I think if they're making like 50 grand a month just from talking shit into a microphone, it's going to be fairly close when, it, when we say something like, oh, what do you want, fame or money? They're going to be quite close because the money is also important because you know it helps and it's obviously something he's definitely motivated by so i don't think it's mostly just about the praise and to be famous and be remembered no no, no. i think it's also the praise you know wanting validation from people and wanting to feel like you know you meant something to people and also wanting to make tons of cash because why not you've only got a short time on this earth anyway so if you've got a short time on this earth and you've got the real opportunity to make that cash because of your association with rogan i don't see why you wouldn't do it but 
he's being a bit disingenuous here, saying that he wants to you know, what just get love and shit. No, you also want to increase your your zeros in your bank account. Talk about how you don't get enough appreciation on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I like the love. Yeah, I, I love the uh, love. I, I, I some uh, some guy left a, left a shitty comment on uh, one of our two bears posts. I, I never read comments, but it was like. The first, and it was a good post. I liked the post. And so I was like, you know, you get caught sometimes. You go, ooh, comments up. wonder what it says. Like, it's got to be positive. Usually it's someone you know, and you're like, oh, nice. And it was like, uh, do not do you remember when Tom and Bert used to be funny or something? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm going to comment. Like, but you thought we were fun. Like, I was trying to think of, like, a fun comment to come back. Yeah. And then, like, five people came off the plane and were like, uh, Hey man, I love what you do. I love it. And then I was like, oh, I, that energy. It's like I don't really understand people that don't like being famous because I go, it's really fun. Right. It's really fun <laughs> yeah. for someone to go like, hey, you're the Kool Aid guy, and yeah. then to know that you gave them a moment sure. that they just giggled and yeah. then go, oh yeah, I. You're the Kool Aid guy. If someone said that to me, I might punch him in the face. That sounds kind of racist. That sounds a little bit. No blacks, no dogs, no Irish. That sounds a little bit wild. Someone said to me, <laughs> hey, you're the chicken dude, right? Hey, you like barbecue sauce, right? Hey, you like macaroni and cheese, right? Hey, don't you eat sweet corn? Hey, you like cornbread, right? Hey, fish and grits? Hey, chicken and waffles? Hey, Hennessy? Hey, Sarok. <laughs> hey, Jordans. <laughs> that would be crazy. You're the Kool Aid guy. Press X to doubt on that one, by the way. I, I, it's, it's, I, yeah, I don't think I could ever tap out. Ah, uh, there we have it. First it was Bert the No Shirt Guy, then it was the Russian Mafia Guy, and now the trifecta, Bert the Kool-Aid Guy. This episode could have been called Bert's Life Achievements, but remember, Bert loves all kinds of energy, including energy itself. Yeah, but it's yeah, also yeah. it's also tethered to so many other things, like not just comedy and, and podcasting, but like introducing you guys to Joe last night. It's fun. I really get off on sure. that. Sure. Like and, and and like going like, hey, can I bring you guys over? Can can get? I, I love, uh, I love energy. I want. That's why I'm terrified of death. Is because that energy. <laughs> no energy, bro. Yeah, that's and, and, well, and, and you know, over. Tom's there. dad, when he passed, said something to Tommy, and I, that I think of every fucking all every day. I think of it. He said, "Buddy, life goes on. Life goes on." And I think of that. I I you know it's so f funny, in that. I never met your dad or anything, and but that one statement means his life goes on because I think of it every day. I mm -hmm. think of your dad a lot where I go, that's such a f***ing profound statement is it does go on. It does go on and people are forgotten and you have to do your next day and there will be days you don't think about me. But that statement sticks with me and it's my thing I fight against is I don't want to be forgotten. Yeah. I want to be, I want to be, uh, I, w I just want people to go like, man, how cool would Bert be right now? Like, that's yeah. the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the fucking thing. So I think my thing is not money. F money. It's the, can you leave a mark when when you're gone? Like Jimmy Buffett, your dad. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my grandma. When I think of my grandma, she gave me this necklace. And I think of her all the time. Do you, Will you be remembered? And you don't need to be remembered like like Winston Churchill. But will you be remembered and 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 how long can you put off that second death where no one remembers you? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How long can you live where people still talk about you? Imagine stealing one of the most generic lines in history, life goes on, from someone you've never met. That's got to be one of the most burnt things I've ever heard him say. Jesus. Halfway through the story, he says, by the way, I've never met Tom's dad. <laughs> and this is probably the 10th. So the whole entire time, he never met Tom's dad, yet he's taking, oh my God. Oh my fucking god. This guy's incredible, bro. Now I get why Podcast Cringe rags on Bert so much. When you actually look into Bert and you analyze him, he's a fucking loser, isn't it? Imagine this being your dad. It must be a good life because you get to go to private school and you get to have nice first cards and you get looked after and shit, but it must be ins it must be insufferable, exhausting being the child of fucking Bert. God almighty, bro. <laughs>
<laughs> stealing Tom's dad's dying words from his deathbed, and he never and he was never there. I thought I thought he I thought he said the story like he was actually there, like him and Tom were together. He was in the room when Bert's dad, when Tom's dad unfortunately passed, and he heard the last word, like or he was waiting outside the hospital room or something. He wasn't even there. He just got told it, and now he's internalized it as his own issue. As, as part of his own like origin story as part of his law now he's worse he's he, not worse he's the same level. he he kind of he doesn't lie as like flagrantly as brendan but he definitely has that ability to like weave his own narratives in his head to make himself sound awesome you know he, i don't think he lies about other pe things he achieves but he definitely you know concocts these fucking arcs these anime arcs for himself you know these different plot lines He's a wild guy. In time, he's brought up how scared he is of dying and people not remembering and celebrating him. He clearly has some deep issues. Yeah, big up Coyle in the chat. Thank you for joining, my friend. What's good, Coyle? I hope you're good. It's going on from his childhood, you know, fear of abandonment or something like that. He reminds me of one of those people who are scared to be alone. I've known a few people like that myself. They always have to be around others, and yeah. when they don't, they become super stressed. Yeah, exactly. That's what makes me think that Bert doesn't really care anymore about whether he gets positive or negative attention. He just wants the attention, however he can get it. That's the thing. I don't think Bert has ever cared. That's that's where they have a similarity to Adam Twenty Two. Adam Twenty Two is the same. Adam Twenty Two, I think, has got to a point, or he's always been like this personally. He just wants to be in the news. He he's desperately wants to be famous. He loves the attention he gets from it. He fucking enjoys it. Um, almost like, you know what? It's similar. Like Casey Neistat. Like Casey Neistat. Casey Neistat is another one. Casey Neistat is another one who for a long time, again, this is a weird segue, but Casey Neistat would always complain about random people showing up to his studio and like knocking on the door and trying to say hi and shit. But he always features his studio on his vlogs, makes it very clear where it is. He always includes cuts in his vlogs where random people shout, hey, Casey, down the street. He always includes it. He fucking loves the attention, right? So if you don't like people showing up at your fucking studio, if you don't like people fucking, you know, disrupting your day or messing about with your work, maybe make it clear that there's a separation between your content side and your life side. But he melds them together and he always features it in his vlog. So it obviously encourages some of that bad behavior. But with Bert, I personally think the fact that he's never, to give him credit, he's never really crashed out on the comments. He's never really gone crazy like like Bert, like Brendan, you know, with the whole homeless cats rant. Either but way. for the people that are, are negative or are on uh, are are on forums and are uh, 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 well, create well, troll, troll accounts, accounts. I, I view yeah, those people the like, same. I view a homeless guy like, critiquing my, my art, art or critiquing my set and or critiquing a podcast. podcast. They, they do, do not, not matter. matter. It literally does Doesn't not matter, matter to me. I mean, not, because like because someone not the the per, the person no, who would go out of their way to create that account or to live in their mom's basement or whatever job they're working could not even fathom fathom the amount of work it takes to pull off something whether it's a set or a good podcast or a business or merchandise or you know it's just it it, it does not matter it does not matter to me so when people let lets that affect their mood or their life it's mind-boggling it's crazy to me what do you care? It'd be the same as if a cat, cat. made a profile. <laughs> That's a good example. Who cares? Like a very example. Even a homeless guy. <laughs> if a homeless guy was just creating a profile and talking shit, they have, it doesn't matter. So at least Bert doesn't have one of these. For all the negative attention he gets, for all the critique, he's never had a crash out like this. So I think that is a clear sign that he enjoys, he loves the fucking negative. He loves the attention. Negative or positive, he loves it. When people talk about him, like he probably secretly enjoys that he has these videos on YouTube with millions of views about how the downfall of fucking Bert. He fucking loves it because it means that he's important, means people care about him. I used to think that he was just genuinely oblivious to all the hate that he gets, but he's clearly aware of it now, but likes to create his own narrative so he can sleep at night. For example, that story he was telling about getting off the plane after reading that comment about him and Tom not being funny anymore, and five people coming up to him and saying, we love what you do, thanks for the laughs, etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. First of all, I doubt it was five people, it was probably like one or two. That's, that's the thing. Thank you, Podcast Scrooge, for saying that. He's fucking specified it. I didn't realize the number. But saying five people came up to an airport is a bit much. You're not fucking Tom Cruise. Five people. Maybe one. 
that that's possible, especially in LA, especially the flights that they take, right? They're probably in major comedy club hotspots. They're usually around the times what of the weekend where most people are flying. It makes sense why he would see one person. But to say five people, come on, bro. Five. Most people as well, myself included, if I see somebody I know that's famous, I might not even say nothing. I might just be like, hey, what's up? I might I might do a little head nod or like, you know, thumbs up or something. But I, I bet in Bert's head, because he lies often or he twists the truth, I bet he counts a little head nods or like people like whispering to their friends and looking over at him. He counts that as somebody saying, oh, I love your stand up. You're amazing. Please keep drinking. Please taking your top off. You know, he kind of does that thing. He kind of takes the truth, which is different from Brendan. Brendan just outright lies. That's my stance. Brendan just outright will pathologically lie to make himself sound better, right? Brian, Brian kind of asks him, hey, have you, ever met, have you ever met Kanye? He's like, yeah, just straight up lies. Whereas at least with Bert, he will take a nugget of truth and then just spin it. So maybe if you ask Bert, do you meet Kanye? he will be like, no, I, I was around him and he, he I, I don't think he liked the way I was drinking. So he might have been around him, but he probably didn't notice he would lean like he was drinking, but he added that a little bit on top of it just to make him seem a bit cooler. So you got one guy that's a pathological liar in Brendan, and you got one guy who's an embellisher in Bert. Choose your fighter. And Bert probably mistakes being recognized by people for being celebrated. I can imagine people going up to Bert and asking him if he's that guy and having a laugh about it, you know, similar to Target Gate, where Bert was approached by two kids asking if he was a YouTuber, but he insisted he was just a by the way, I love the. I just clocked this. I love in the video how he got really defensive. He crossed his arms. You know? the, 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 don't you find that funny? Bert's talking to a kid in a in Target. He's asking him, "Hey, are you famous?" Because he sees him with all his camera equipment, and Bert immediately gets into to, into a defensive pose. He crosses his arms. Right? <laughs> Body language is a fucking bitch, isn't it? If he's that guy and having a laugh about it, you know, similar to Target Gate, where Bert was approached by two kids asking if he was a YouTuber, but he insisted he was just a comedian. And the irony is, I don't know if Bert realizes this, but the internet is a much bigger place than real life. Exactly. That's not necessarily a good thing, but I'm sure he gets more haters than supporters. Mm -hmm. For every one fan that comes up to him on the streets, there's 10 people online that think he's a clown. At least it seems like he's leaning into it at this point and monetizing it until it disappears. I mean, how much longer can he keep going up on stage to tell his machine story than crap his pants, wipe it on a white t-shirt and hold it up to a cheering crowd? I'll tell you what though, one thing to really look out for is when the sponsors start dropping off. I think that's why they knew they had to start their own vodka company so they always have something to sell their audience when everything else dries up. But anyway, that's my breakdown of the latest. I don't think so. I don't think that's true. I don't think they started the vodka brand because of that. I think they just started it because it's money. they don't want to leave money on the table. I think somebody came to them with that proposition. Hey, two bears, you are two middle-aged white dudes. One of you looks like an alcoholic. The other one looks like you're in, in, in recovery, all right? Because, but Tom's got that recovery glow. Somebody that kind of recently quit drugs and alcohol and suddenly got into fitness at fucking 50 and shit, right? So, you know, he's still got that fucked up face, but he kind of obviously doesn't look as fat as Bert. So I think a company approached Bert and Tom. That's my theory. Some sort of beverage company approached them, said, hey, we've got this bottle of vodka we want to sell, white label, put your own branding on it. Because have you noticed they haven't really spoken about they don't really talk much about how much they worked in terms of taste testing and getting the recipe right and what barrels they use, if they use corn or not. They didn't get into any of that specific, you know, details of how they made the vodka, how they developed it. It was most, it's mostly been a branding thing from the merch, from how they launched it in Vegas and shit during the Super Bowl. It was never really about the taste ever. So I think most likely a company reached out to them and just said, hey, you can have partnership shares or whatever. Maybe a rate, but mostly partnership stakes or something, percentages, sorry, um, from sales and then go from there. Um, but I don't think it's a, it's a long-term future play. I don't think so. I don't think that's the case at all. And um, when will it end? Never. It will end when he decides to end it. It's never going to end. They're going to write this until the wheel falls off. These guys don't, they never, that's why I kind of admire, for, I admire, oops, I admired for a small time um, Ari Shafir and fucking Joey Diaz. At least they quit, you know? At least they decided, okay, cool, I've had enough. I'm going to quit now. People don't quit. These guys don't quit their pods. They just keep on going and run them into the ground. There is no such thing as quitting. There is no such thing as, okay, cool, I've had enough now. It doesn't exist with these guys. They will run their shits into the fucking ground. Into the fucking ground. So, um, yeah.
What can we do? What can we do? What can we do?